Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be showing you all a little, uh, this is one of the different format videos. This is a uh, finance video, my first finance video on this channel. And today I'm going to be showing you all how to uh, make a budget spreadsheet. Now this is going to be, I'm going to be using Google Docs for this, but you can use Excel or OpenOffice or LibreOffice or whatever uh, office program, they're, they're all pretty identical in functionality in terms of this. There's not a whole lot, there's just some basic sum functions that uh, sum up some numbers. And essentially there are, um, and uh, this is more of a personal finance. Now I do want to point out that unfortunately, if you make an inconsistent paycheck, like for instance, if you're like a contractor, maybe you're, you work at like a restaurant and you mainly rely on tips for your pay and you can't really derive like an average paycheck, it's, you know, fluctuates wildly. This may not be the, you may not be able to use this to forecast financially, but you can still use it to base, to budget out your uh, week, your paychecks more or less. So I'm going to show you all how, uh, or how this works first off. So there are different, the uh, columns up here, each one, each individual column is a type of bill. Now, uh, I don't have a whole lot of bills here. I mean, i I do have some, like I have some recurring stuff, like I have my Spotify, it's like really only, really the only recurring service I have. I like to itemize it just because I don't have like three or four or five different like streaming services or things that I have monthly that I want to keep track of. And then I have my cell phone bill, which uh, I usually just pay in cash, so it's, uh, sometimes I don't track it properly just because people will pay me in cash and I'll just pay, uh, my parents in cash just because I'm through their plan and I just pay them. <laughs> so then I have the electric bill. Now what I did on the, what I, what I do with the electric bill and the water bill respectively is I, um, I, I, first of all, I gather some data. So any, the act, especially for the forecasting, what I do is I do a running average for the average monthly cost for a uh, electric or a water bill. So I collect, I'll first wait for a few uh, bills to go through and or a few months to go by. And once I have enough data to get a nice average, I'll go ahead and just pop open the calculator app or just calculator. And then I'll just add the bills. So for instance, I can uh, collect the average here based on what I have. So 168 point, let's see, 94 plus 180.39 plus 188.48, 255. And then, okay, so we had that number. We have all these added up here. One, so that's six months. We're gonna divide that number by six and I'll get a running average about $230. So technically I should go ahead and just mark this average as about 200. And uh, basically one thing I do have, one thing you notice above these columns for these the each individual type is I have a bill due date. Now this is a, usually a range of dates unless the due date is constant. For instance, my uh, financial aid for my student loans and my car loan are, are on the 26th or the 11th every month. But things like water and electric and those are usually varying within uh, waters typically. I forgot what exact date or what date range it is, but electric is definitely 6th to 11th. So I always need to make sure that when my paychecks come in on the left here, which is the leftmost column, that's my paycheck date or the pay date because I paid bi-weekly that um, I'm paying within that range and it's I'm not paying too late. Of course, you can pay early off, or I can put that in earlier, but I can't put it in later or else I will screw up the budget. So just um, just something to watch out when you are doing the spreadsheet is just to make sure that each one of these payments falls before the due date or that each one of these paychecks falls before the due date or else you may end up in some hot water and you may uh, nerf up some of your numbers. So of course I have uh, basically methods of uh, income. Of course I have my business income and I have my normal, uh, this is the previous balance and my work paycheck. So typically my work paycheck averages around $1,000 per uh, pay period. And then what I've done here is for new and participatory months, I have taken the remaining funds, which is basically these two fields 
and then I have subtracted the sum of the rest of the fields on that particular line, and that'll give me my remaining funds. And what'll happen is that'll carry over on the next paycheck. So if you see P15, that's the cell right here. That's P15 right there, so that'll add in, so it's $1,312. So, for instance, if I change up any of these fields, for instance, I uh, find out my electric's gonna be $250, all of these fields down here will change, which will uh, affect my financial forecast. So, of course, as bills come in, I just update these numbers to reflect, or accurate numbering. Another thing to also keep uh, track of is some months, at least two months out of the year, if you are being paid by or every two weeks, uh, you will get three paycheck months. So for instance, this month for me is the three paycheck month. And then I think like August is also a three paycheck month. So you have, the point, you have to plot everything accordingly and make sure you're not double billing yourself or anything like that, like you would, because everything, otherwise everything's every other paycheck or what have you. So just something to look out for when making this particular spreadsheet. So another thing I highly recommend everyone, pretty much anyone do, as long as you have discipline, is uh, getting a credit card because it makes this spreadsheet really manageable. You don't have to worry about itemizing your individual expenses, which you should be doing initially to figure out how much you are spending, especially if you have a habit of buying fast food, which a lot of finance apps like Mint and Wave, that those are or way of accounting, I think is the proper name for it. Those will uh, let you itemize your uh, particular expenses and see where you're spending your money because that's really important to try to get uh, your savings down. But I've already, I've kind of gotten past that point. Don't really, I mean, I, I don't really spend, I don't really eat out a whole lot, but I do want to say that if you get a credit card and you spend any sort of non-recurring like bill purchases on that credit card, you can usually track your spending relatively easily so long as you keep track of it every paycheck or so. It just gives you a better idea of how much you're actually spending. And of course you do get rewards points, which uh, is pretty awesome, pretty sweet. I mean, it's just the main reason you wanna get a credit card besides building your credit history or your credit score is just those sweet reward points. Cause I usually get like 20, 30 bucks a month just from my Amazon card, which I it's my primary use card. But Let's go ahead and shift gears here. I'm going to show you all how to actually build this spreadsheet. Uh, just a basic thing of it. Of course, like I said, you can always uh, de or deviate or create as many itemized fields as you want, depending on what expenses and what you want to break up. But um, like I said, you don't want to get too deep in the itemization. For instance, uh, before I had a credit card, I would have like f food and fuel in one and then like a miscellaneous spending, which is just like other expenses and stuff that aren't the bare essentials. Bare essentials would just go into food and fuel. And then, you know, of course, miscellaneous is just stuff I'm crap I'd buy off of Amazon that, you know, wasn't really needed. And then subscriptions, I kind of had that lumped together. So I'm just going to show you all basic ones. So we have a uh, pay date. Then we have... Pay check, extra, we'll just do an extra income. And then we have our two earning fields here. And then if we get our first bill, let's just say, it doesn't really matter like what the bills are, it's all formulated pretty much identically. So we have credit card, we have loan. So pretty much, like I said, we're itemizing our recurring monthly payments. Um, let's see here, we have rent. I'm using the inner key, should be using the tab key to tab to the right. And then we have electric, water, miscellaneous. Okay, so that's that's good for our example. And then, okay, so let's say the rent. Now typically the rent is at the end of the month, so you usually wanna just segment that to the last paycheck, unless if your landlord is weird and wants it in the middle of the month or whatever. Just, you know, of course, Always make sure, so end of month. This is like our little uh, note area. So, and then I like to just put a little label just to explain what these are. Credit card, let's say that's gonna be on the so 1 slash 24 slash 18. I just put in like an, ex an example date. And then our loan, that'll be on the 15th, just to simplify things here. And then electric, that will be on the, uh, we'll say that's on the second. And then the water bill, we'll say that's on the eighth, just to create a little example. All right, so 
actually electric let's just spice things up a bit it'll be one two uh, fifth there we go and then we have to of course oh, let's make sure we're spelling that correctly hey there we go all right so we have our basic fields down so let's just you know we'll just do a little one thousand dollar paycheck pay date let's say we'll just um we'll say the sixth the 16th of march will be our pay date which is my pay date now another thing is to track your next pay date you just go to the you can go to the calendar i think you know mac probably has a calendar up at the top so you just track that next friday so the 30th And then let's see here. So it'll be the 13th and the 27th of April. And I think that's a good bit. So first our paychecks will be actually. So paychecks, what we'll do is we'll do 1,000 plus, and then we're going to pull in our remaining funds. Well, hold on just one tick don't have that number just yet so what we'll do is we'll take the second field a lot of plus and then select j3 oh sometimes you just manually key it in although actually almost right okay so when you're doing functions as you see you have to do an equal if you want to call like a certain variable or do like an actual equation so if you don't put that equal, it's just going to do plain text and it won't actually solve it for you. Well, didn't. And of course, if you click anywhere before uh, pressing enter, you will get some weirdness going on. So basically, whenever you're doing a formula like this, click up in this little bar next to FX and then just hit enter when you're done. And then that will solve it or that'll finish the editing of the formula. And then we click on the cell. See this little box? We click on that when we have the crosshairs and drag down. And that will basically copy that function and of course carry down that J. That J will go, will change to J3, J4. Oh, let's, uh, there we go. Okay. So as you can see, starts at J3, J4, J5. So pretty, pretty simple there. And then let's see. Okay, there's a credit card. So tip, let's say it's about $438. That, that's a good little thing. Our loan, let's say that's about 250 bucks a month. Our rent, now of course the rent is at the end of the month. So we don't want to put it in the first cell. We'll skip that. And then our loan is at the 15th. Now of course, for posterity purposes, we'll just say that it was, uh, it's fine. Just to, we paid that a day late, unfortunately. Which, now the credit card, of course, it's on the 24th, so we can't pay it in the last. It has to be paid on this particular month here. And then, of course, let's say the electric was already paid because this was a technically a three-paycheck month. And uh, you could technically say same for the loan, so we'll leave that out of this particular field. So the rent, we we'll want to go down here, and let's say that's about 500 And then the electric, okay, so like I said, we're going to skip that, but we are going to put that on the 13th. And uh, let's say it's about $278, just to throw out a number. Now the water will be on the 8th, so that will actually be, be built on the 30th because it'll just carry over to the next month, but it won't be, it'll be built before the 13th. So let's say that's about 50 bucks. And then miscellaneous, so, it's, so we um, spent about, paid about 200 bucks off of another credit card or something. And then let's see. So you can just throw other, you can just throw all sorts of things here. Now, um, let's, okay, so let's just throw something else. So $200 for our loan and the credit card, let's see, 250 is like, let's say that's like the average that we don't really have any data on right now. And the water, okay, so. And then of course you just copy your fields down like so. And yeah, pretty, pretty simple. All right, now let's go ahead and go to the remaining funds and calculate that. So this is a little bit trickier. It's gonna be a two part equation. So we're gonna do an equal sign once we click on the function field, once we've highlighted the cell. And then we're going to say, 
let's see here. We are going to do paycheck, which plus extra income, and then subtracted by some parentheses. And then what we do is we click and drag all of our expense cells. So as you see, there is, it'll say D3 colon I3. So that when that colon is there, it means there is a range. So it's range from D to I. So any of these cells in that particular row. So we hit the enter key. So we have our remaining funds. $362, as you see, it's updated it on the next, uh, I, or the next line. And then of course, we just click and drag that down. And as you can see, you have your remaining funds. They go, they bounce back from month to month. And of course, you know, as we update ourselves here, our remaining funds update as well. So definitely it gives you an idea. Now, another thing you, I like to do is as soon as I get paid, I, ref, I pull up the spreadsheet and then I start, start knocking bills out. So, yep, it's got the 16th. Okay, so I paid off my credit card. What I do is I go to fill color and I just mark that baby green. And that means that I have paid, I've actually paid that off. So I don't need to worry about it. So then I'll go ahead and just, you know, let's say I paid off that, and then there we go. So we got, and of course, say once I actually have my paycheck in, I like marking that green too as well. Another thing is, of course, say there is some discrepancy. For instance, maybe there's another expense you didn't track in here, so it didn't update. So what I like to do is I always check my bank statement before I even pay anything, and, I'm, and I make sure that this particular field is fully updated and there are all the transactions have passed through. And then I'll go ahead and just update this. Like, okay, so it was actually about 1265 instead of 1300. So I went ahead and updated that. And then I mark it green. And then next, you know, I'll go ahead and pay the bills. And of course, I'll mark that green as well. You just keep marking them green as you pay them off. And that, that way you keep track. You make sure you pay your bills and everything's good to go and hunky dory. So pretty, pretty simple concept. Now this is, uh, this is part one of the video here. I hope you all liked it. Next up will be the financial forecasting and basically good practices for using this spreadsheet to, uh, base, to keep your finances in check and just to make sure you aren't living paycheck to paycheck or at least helping you getting to that point where you don't have to worry about uh, not scraping by every week, every single paycheck. So hope you all like this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing, and thank you for watching and have a great day.